Overlook Horizon High Altitude Balloons, an Ontario County nonprofit. This is no ordinary balloon. What a view! Over 110,000 feet. This is incredible. Five, four, three, two, one, launch. Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon, coming to you live on a Tuesday morning, which originally was going to be Rocket Tuesday. We had a whole bunch of rocket launches lined up for today, but it seems like they're just dropping one by one, and uh, they we're down to just SpaceX, and that's a maybe. That's a big maybe at the moment. Uh, right now, uh, SpaceX is looking at upper-level winds uh, that are uh, that are not good right now, and uh, but we also had... Blue Origin was on track to launch at 9.30 this morning. That's been scrubbed due to ground infrastructure. Um, the uh, Delta IV Heavy out on the West Coast, I believe, has been scrubbed for ground winds. And the uh, Arian Space Soyuz down in French Guiana, is uh, um, that's also scrubbed. I forget what the reason for that scrub was. That might have been, was that winds as well? I'm not, I can't remember. But there's been so many scrubs today uh, that we're down to one. Uh, they've all been pushed off until Wednesday, but it looks like SpaceX right now is uh, is doing okay at the moment. They are go for propellant loading, so they are on track, which means they're gonna they're gonna really give it a try this morning. So they've started propellant loading. Usually, once they start propellant loading, that means that they're gonna actually really gonna try to give it a go. They try to hold off on that. They try not to start putting propellant into the Falcon 9 unless they're actually sure that they they want to give it a shot. Um, but th so they they are doing that. They just went go for propellant loading just uh, a few minutes ago, uh, like literally three minutes ago. They they gave the go for propellant loading. Um, but the big story here is, is going to be watching the upper level winds. So let me switch you over here. I got a where's my little graphic here, uh, and I'll switch you over so you can see what we're dealing with here on the upper level winds. Uh, so this is uh, this is a look at the upper level winds right now, which are uh, pretty much right over Cape Canaveral, Florida. Uh, it's it's pretty windy there. We're hitting winds, upper level winds. Uh, this uh, the, at about I think it's uh, let's see, where's my there you go. You're about 100 miles an hour, 96, 99, 98, uh, and it's pretty much right over Cape Canaveral, Florida. Uh, so it, it's not looking great for uh, upper level winds, but hopefully they can sort that out before uh, before the, the actual launch this morning. Um, and it, it seems like they have some confidence, but not a huge launch window this morning. Um, they, uh, they've only got about 30 minutes, so uh, until 9.37 a.m. Eastern time, um, which is about 35 minutes from now, they've got, um, but the window didn't, didn't open until 9.00. 11 so it was from 9 11 to 9 37 was the window uh, so pretty short window today for this launch but uh, hopefully they can give it a shot right now the launch is pretty much at the end of the launch window it's actually at 9 34 uh, even though the launch window uh, extends three minutes further i'm not really sure i'm not sure what the deal is there but um but uh so anyways what Let's figure out what we're launching here today, uh, at least for SpaceX. Um, so this is the uh, the GPS three dash two mission. Uh, a lot of people just call it a GPS three, uh, which myself included. Uh, but basically, this is a national security mission for the U.S. Air Force that is launching today. It's launching a set of GPS satellites into medium Earth orbit, so a little bit higher than. Um, then low Earth orbit, but not into geostationary orbit or geostationary transfer orbit. And also of note, it's not even uh, medium Earth or medium Earth transfer orbit. That's confusing to say. Um, but this is a direct to medium Earth orbit. And so what's that mean? That means it's going to take a little extra energy, a little extra delta V to actually get that into a circular orbit. It's not going to do the elliptical orbit that we've seen uh, for like geostationary transfer orbit. This will be a circular orbit in the end, which also means unfortunately that SpaceX will not be recovering the first stage. That is going to be an expendable block five first stage booster. Um, so no recovery on that. Um, and we can even show you, so basically they need the extra energy for, uh, to make sure that they can get into that, 
uh, into that medium Earth orbit. Also, there's been a little bit of concern from the Air Force with uh, with regards to reusing boosters, uh, and so the the U.S. Air Force is not too keen on risking their uh, their national security payloads uh, with reusable boosters. Uh, it seems like to me that they they've pretty much proven themselves to be reliable, but obviously uh, with national security uh, uh, and super important missions, they're going to be a little more cautious. Uh, they don't want any any uncertainty. They don't want to add extra things that could cause issues. So things like the landing legs are gone for today. The grid fins are gone for today. Some of the, even like the actuators and stuff on the inside of the interstage for the grid fins, those are not even included. Um, so this is, uh, it's, it's going to look like a very naked Falcon 9 rocket uh, this morning, uh, if we can, if we can get there. So we're going to see. Um, but what this is here that we're looking at now, this is the, uh, the launch hazards map. Uh, this is basically showing you the trajectory here. So we're launching from Slick 40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida here. Um, so you've got some of the, uh, uh, the launch hazard areas here that are mapped out, but we're launching from Slick 40 here on Cape Canaveral. You can zoom in and see a couple of the, uh, the launch pads here. So up here, this is, uh, oh, you can't see my mouse, can you? Uh, but at the top here is uh, 39B, then you got 39A, then you've got pad 41, and then the red dot, the red pin here, this is pad 40. For SpaceX. So we're uh, going off and it's going in a very much uh, a northeastern direction here. Uh, and then this launch hazard out here, this was where basically the booster is going to come crashing back down, uh, back down to Earth as well as the payload fairing. Um, I've heard conflicting reports on the payload fairing, whether they're going to recover it, they're not going to recover it. There's no Mr. Steven boat, so they're not going to be catching it with the net. Um, but some people have said that there is a support ship that's out there and potentially the uh, they may soft land it in the water and then pick it up and bring it back. I didn't get a chance to actually see if that uh, if that ship was out there. Um, usually I would, I would go look myself on uh, marine traffic to see if the ship was out there, but I didn't get a chance to actually go look to see if it was there. Um, so you let me know in the comments if you know one way or another if uh, one of their support ships is out there uh, ready to at least recover the uh, the payload fairing here. So, so uh, let's see. Still on track for 9.34 a.m. Eastern Time. It's 14.34 UTC. Um, and it seems like... Um, so I'm just... I'm kind of trying to read... I'm following on Twitter trying to make sure that uh, I've, I've got the latest updates here. But uh, they are loading RP-1, uh, the rocket-grade kerosene, into the Falcon 9. They're also loading the liquid oxygen. Uh, both are going into the fuel tank, so you would think that there's some some level of confidence from SpaceX uh, if they're going to go through and do that. Um, but uh, what we'll have uh, right above me is the SpaceX live broadcast. We'll uh, see if that goes live. Usually that doesn't go live until about 15 or 20 minutes before launch, so we still have some time for that yet. Um, so we're, we're just going to have to see what uh, what happens there. Um, and, uh, before I get to, uh, I see a bunch of the comments, I'm going to jump over to those in just a second here, but before we get to them, just to make sure that we can cover everything before launch, uh, just want to take a look at, uh, some of our statistics here for today's launch. So this is the, uh, 72nd SpaceX launch, 66th Falcon 9 launch, the 39th SpaceX launch from Slick 40. This is the 20th. No, that's, that doesn't seem right. The 20th? This is the 21st. It's, my graphic is wrong. <laughs> Isn't this the 21st launch of this year? Uh, so this would be the 21st launch Falcon 9. Oh, no. 20, that's what it says. It says 20th Falcon 9. Okay, that's right. 20th Falcon 9. I guess I should have kept reading. 20th Falcon 9 launch of this year. 21st SpaceX launch of this year. Got myself a little twisted up there. Uh, but yeah, 21st SpaceX launch for this year, which is fantastic. That's is a new record for SpaceX. Last year they did 18. This year they're up to 21. Awesome. And hopefully we'll do, do an even more next year. Um, and this is the uh, this is the first flight for today's Block 5 booster. Brand new Block 5 booster. Never been flown before and will never be flown again because it will be expendable. It will fly and it will crash fantastically into the ocean, which we won't see. Um, but it will be, it'll be out there. So, 
Uh, and Gregorius on YouTube says, Go Pursuit is attempting fairing recovery according to Twitter. Yeah, I think that's what I saw as well, Gregorius. Um, so Go Pursuit is uh, one of SpaceX uh, support ships. Uh, it does not have a net on it like Mr. Stevens, so they're not going to do the whole uh, catch it in the net kind of thing for the payload fairing. But basically they would soft land it on the water, take the ship Go Pursuit, pull up, pick it up, put it on the ship, bring it back. Um, so that's, that is what I heard as well. And so uh, we'll, we're probably not going to get many updates for that. Usually they don't have a camera on there. Um, you may see on Twitter there might be some updates as the, the payload fairing comes in, but usually not a ton of updates um, from, from the payload fairing recoveries yet. Um, then we'll take a look at uh, today's timeline here. Uh, so this is what the timeline is. So we're into propellant loading. Um, which is the RP-1, the rocket-grade kerosene, and the liquid oxygen. That's going into the Falcon 9 right now. Um, and that'll bring us uh, all the way down to liftoff here. There's a couple other things for uh, engine chill, flight computers, uh, pressurization on the tanks. But we'll get liftoff, go through max Q. We'll have the, uh, the first stage uh, engine cutoff and separation. Second stage will st start. You'll get fairing deployment. Uh, and then we'll have second engine cutoff at about eight minutes after launch. Uh, and then I think, uh, I, don't, I don't know how long SpaceX is gonna go on the broadcast. I don't think we're gonna go the entire, the entire hour coast phase. So there is, there, uh, after the second stage cutoff, the Falcon, or the upper stage is going to coast for one hour, and then it will restart after an hour uh, it'll do a just a real quick burn to circularize into medium Earth orbit, and then it will deploy. Then there's another long coast uh, of about another 50 minutes, and then it will deploy the uh, Air Force's GPS-3 SV-01 satellite. Um, uh, there's multiple satellites in there actually, but um, they uh, they will. It's about about a two-hour process here. I don't think we're going to go live for the entire two hours, but we'll definitely watch the launch. We'll watch all the way up to second engine cutoff. We'll chat a little bit. We'll do some giveaways over on the YouTube channel, and uh, and then we'll probably call it a day. I was hoping that we were going to get a two for one and we'd see Blue Origin as well, uh, but it looks like Blue Origin is going to be tomorrow. Um, but that'll be something to keep an eye out for. Um, if it does go tomorrow, uh, I won't be able to live broadcast it, but I will. I'll be live tweeting. Uh, and definitely be watching. I just won't be able to live stream uh, if they if they launch it tomorrow. So we'll have to keep an eye on that uh, for Blue Origin because that's always exciting as well. So uh, all right, so let me check out some of your comments here. What do we got for time here? We still got some time, um, but yeah, a bunch of people are hoping that it's not a scrub. We almost we we started off with uh, today was Rocket Tuesday. It's turning out to be Scrub Tuesday, <laughs> Rocket Scrub Tuesday. Uh, after we've got three scrubs and uh, just wait, just one left here. So um, let's see, what else did we miss for comments? Uh, Gregorius likes our sliding animation in the opening. Well, thanks, I appreciate it. Um, let's see, uh, launch time is 9.34 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, it's 14.34 UTC. Uh, uh, let's see. Is this the last launch of 2018? Uh, yes, for SpaceX, this will be the last launch of 2018. The next launch for SpaceX is the Iridium-8 mission, which is the last of the Iridium uh, set of missions uh, for the Iridium Next constellation. Um, and so that, that Iridium-8 mission is not until January 7th. Uh, so this will be the last SpaceX launch of 2018 putting them at 21 launches total, assuming they can they can pull this off here for today. Um, what else? Is I, um, we also have uh, coming up in January is the uh, the demo flight. It looks like it it is cooking along. It's moving um, for uh, oh hey look at this we got a live live stream for SpaceX. So it looks like they're gonna they're gonna push forward. Um, but the demo mission is coming up towards uh, mid January for SpaceX as well. Another super exciting event coming up so uh Weedled, what he really wants uh more or he or she wants more west coast launches um let's see there wasn't a land yeah no la no landing oh yeah mike ferguson said there wasn't a landing last time either yeah technically there wasn't a landing last time either well no that's not true there was a landing it was just a water landing it was just a uh 
and it was a off nominal landing. <laughs> it was not quite what they want. They tried to land on land last time, and uh, the uh, they got a stuck grid fin, caused the uh, Falcon 9 to abort and uh, land it in the water. Um, so, and I'm not even sure I say the Falcon 9 abort. I'm not even entirely sure. I'm still a little bit confused on the, the process. So the Falcon 9 always targets off land. It targets the water when it comes back to land on land. So it targets the water and then it uses the grid fins to almost create aerodynamic lift. So the grid fins, if this is the top of the rocket, the grid fins actually kind of push, push down on the top of the rocket and cause it the bottom to lift up and kind of aerodynamically lift it and push it back to the landing site. Um, and so that's, that's one of the big functions of the grid fins. Um, so the, the engines target the water, the grid fins will push it to the actual land, landing spot on land. So when one of those grid fins failed, I'm not entirely sure if, it's, if it was like an abort and it decided, okay, I'm no longer gonna push it towards land, we're just gonna go towards the water, or if because the grid fin is what failed and it was spinning out of control that it could not physically push it towards land and that's what caused it to hit the water instead. Um, so it's, uh, it was a little bit of confusion on my part. If anybody knows the, the definitive answer for that, definitely let me know. But uh, either way, one way or another, it landed in the water, which is exactly what it's supposed to do if something goes wrong with the actual landing itself so that it's not uh, exploding over land and hurting infrastructure and or, and or people. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, so, uh, oh, so somebody said... Uh, what, uh, it's up to the last weather balloon here. So yeah, weather balloons playing a big a big part in today's launch because of those upper level winds. Uh, and that's how they're measuring the upper level winds is with weather balloons, which is how we tie into this whole thing. Um, but a lot of weather balloons being launched today to, uh, for SpaceX and the 45th Space Wing. Or actually, I believe it's SpaceX that measures the upper level winds. I don't think the 45th Space Wing actually does the upper level wind measurements because uh, though the upper level wind measurements are not included in the weather forecast that the 45th space wing does um, I'm not sh I'm not sure who actually launches the weather balloons I know 45th space wing has the capability to launch weather balloons but whether they actually do for I'm not sure if they do it for SpaceX I believe SpaceX is the one that makes the call on whether the upper level winds are acceptable or not uh, so maybe 45th space space wing oh, that's really hard to say fast. Uh, maybe they launch it and then give SpaceX the information. I'm not sure how that works, but a lot of weather balloons going up to measure those upper level winds to see if they're going to be acceptable today, which it looks like they're going to at least try since the broadcast is live, although they haven't actually started talking yet. So we'll see. We're going to have to wait and see uh, see what happens there. Um, what else did I miss? Um, uh, some bunch of people saying it's very windy here. Yeah, that jet stream that we looked at, uh, Cody Star said that was a great water landing last time. <laughs> um, and let's see, uh, Killer Katie says the computer saved and it opted for a water landing. Um, this is on the last, uh, the last Falcon 9 landing. Um, Oh, there you go. Mike Ferguson says the Air Force does the weather balloon launches. Um, he used to work with the weather squadrons. Well, thanks for the info, Mike. Yeah, I, I definitely have seen the 45th Space Wing launch weather balloons, so I definitely know they have the capability to do it. Just wasn't sure, uh, but I'm pretty sure that it's SpaceX that actually makes the call on whether they're acceptable, so I'm not sure where that communication is uh, for how that's cross communicated between the two groups, but I'm sure they work pretty closely together during these launches here. So, um, let's see, I'm just checking my, uh, my Twitter feed to see if there were any updates, but, uh, yeah, nothing, not, no news is good news right now. Um, Although, uh, so this is what I just saw here it says the SpaceX team has been briefed at this time of what to do if the urgent need to abort the count for upper level winds becomes a no-go condition. Uh, this, uh, but this is, a, this is a standard briefing. So nothing, it's not necessarily special about today, but they, they were just briefed uh, about performing an, an urgent uh, abort for upper level winds. Um, but that's part of their standard briefing. Uh, but looks like we're gonna actually, they're gonna still give it a try here. So <laughs> Bill Hurley. 
Uh, Bill Hurley says, who brings the Space Lobster Christmas presents? Santa Claus. <laughs> it's like, that one got, that one tickled me a little bit, but it's like a, it's a dad joke, I feel like, but it's a good one. It's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, hey, looks like they're going to go live here. So I guess I ought to switch over and we'll listen in. We'll see what they have to say for, uh, in regards to those upper level wins. Um, but it looks like they're going to give it a try here. So fingers crossed that we actually get a, a launch here today. And uh, we'll, uh, let me get some volume up here uh, so you can hear it. Hopefully it's not too loud. And uh, oh, and I got to switch it over. Good morning from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. It is Tuesday, December 18th, just about. I don't know. About 6.20 a.m. <laughs> here on the West Coast and 9.20 a.m. local time in Florida. Welcome to this morning's launch of the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 1 satellite for the U.S. Wow, Air why Force. Why keep buffering? You're currently looking at a live view of that Falcon 9 at Space Launch Complex 40 as it awaits its 9.34 a.m. Eastern Standard Time launch from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. My name is Tom Perdario and I'm a firmware engineer here at SpaceX. Today's Morning, payload Tom. is uh, likely a familiar one. It is the Global Positioning System Satellite, or GPS. Uh, if you've ever navigated somewhere in your car or used your smartphone, uh, you have used these satellites. But beyond navigation, the GPS satellite constellation provides a large range of positioning and uh, timing services for both civil and military purposes. Uh, due to a, a combination of spacecraft mass and orbit, we will not be attempting a first stage recovery today as we need to reserve enough fuel to get the payload to its intended orbit. Today's launch represents SpaceX's 21st launch and final launch for 2018. The launch window lasts 26 minutes and will close at 9.37 a.m. Eastern Time. And with just a little over uh, 12 minutes to go before launch, let's check in with Shiva to see what's happening on the pad. Thanks, Tom. My name is Shiva. I'm a Falcon integration test engineer here at SpaceX. And behind me is a live view of Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle. Now, Falcon 9 is over 70 meters tall, which is taller than a 21-story building. Now, the base of the vehicle, which is shrouded in some fog, is what we refer to as the first stage. It has nine Merlin engines at its base, which accelerate the entire vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere to the edge of space. Now, as Tom mentioned earlier, today's target orbit does not permit a recovery attempt, making today's Falcon 9 a rare expendable version. So it doesn't have grid fins here at the top, and it doesn't have landing legs either. The first stage gets us to the edge of space, but it's the second stage above the first stage that will carry today's GPS-3 satellite to a medium Earth orbit, or MEO. About three minutes into the launch, the first stage engines will cut off, and the second stage will separate. Following stage separation, the second stage will fire its single Merlin vacuum, or NVAC engine, to bring it and the GPS-3 space vehicle to a highly elliptical transfer orbit. Now, as the rocket ascends, friction with the Earth's atmosphere generates tremendous pressure forces and heating. Our five meter diameter payload fairing, which is this two piece composite structure at the very tip of the rocket, protects today's satellite from these forces. In fact, because of the extra heating, we have a little bit of extra thermal protection at the very tip of the vehicle. Now, once we're in the vacuum of space, the fairing's mission is complete, and we'll jettison it back to Earth to reduce overall vehicle mass. We won't be attempting to recover today's fairing, as our fairing recovery vessel, Mr. Stephen, is currently on the west coast of the United States. Now, on the side of the rocket, this large gray truss structure is what we refer to as the transporter erector, or TE. Now, the TE rolls Falcon 9 out to the launch pad and raises it to the vertical launch position while also providing power, launch fluids, and communication feeds to both the satellite and rocket just up until about T minus one minute when Falcon 9 will switch over to its own internal control. Now, let's hear how launch preparations are going from Tom. We are now just under 10 minutes until liftoff. In the past several hours, uh, key steps have, been ta have taken place in order to get the rocket closer to its T minus zero liftoff. Uh, the pad was cleared at about T minus six hours before launch, and then 38 minutes before launch, the launch director pulled the team to determine readiness for propellant load, and then we did proceed to begin loading propellant and uh, fuel onto the vehicle. The GPS spacecraft finished transitioning to internal power at about T minus 15 minutes before launch. 
Falcon 9 uses a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 for its fuel and super chilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, as its oxidizer. To ignite the engines, Falcon 9 uses a chemical called TTEB, which stands for triethyl aluminum, triethyl borate, which you'll see at T0 via the telltale green spark right before the rocket takes off. Currently, RP-1 is nearly fully loaded on the first stage, and the second stage is fully fueled. Liquid oxygen loading is currently underway and will finish loading on the first and second stages at three and two minutes prior to launch, respectively. We've also began helium loading. Uh, helium gas acts as our pressurant to push RP-1 and LOX through the Merlin engines, and helium will continue to top off until a minute and a half before launch. Engine chill began at about T minus seven minutes, or will begin at about T minus seven minutes to lift off. Uh, this is where we open the valves between the first stage Merlin engines and the propellant tanks to allow just a small amount of that super chilled liquid oxygen into the turbo pumps to begin to bring down their temperature to avoid any shocks to the system when the full flow of locks begins flowing into those engines. At about T minus four and a half minutes, that white truss structure called the transporter erector, or TE, will retract away from the rocket just slightly to provide clearance for the Falcon 9 to lift off. Uh, looking at liftoff conditions, the range is currently green for launch. Uh, we monitor upper level winds, ground level winds, uh, cloud rules and lightning rules. It is a clear day at the Cape, uh, but right now we are monitoring those upper level winds, uh, but they are trending in a positive direction. However, if for any reason we cannot launch today, we do have a backup launch opportunity for tomorrow with the window opening at 9.07 a.m. Eastern Time. Another direct Hi, competition I'm Michael Andrews, with Blue Origin. I'm a member of the supply chain team here at SpaceX. As Tom mentioned earlier, today we're launching the GPS-3 Space Vehicle 1 satellite for the U.S. Air Force. The Global Positioning System, commonly known as GPS, is a satellite-based global navigation array. It provides a remarkably diverse set of uses, from navigation to agriculture to search and rescue. The GPS project began back in 1973 for military uses and became widely available for the public in the 1990s. The last of the, the, last of the second series of GPS satellites, GPS-2, was launched back in 2016. Now this latest oh, generation just just heard a hold. delivers new capabilities just such heard as it. three times improved accuracy, eight There's times improved anti-jamming capabilities, yeah. an extended 15-year service life, and increased coordination with other international global navigation systems. Yeah, they just called a hold on the uh, on the launch loop. Could hear in the background. Oh, that's going to be unfortunate. And now, of course, they now they've stopped talking because you can see the the countdown has turned yellow. So the count is in a hold, uh, and there's they only have three minutes to spare. So that likely means they're going to scrub for today. But. Uh, uh, it's possible they could resume the countdown. They'd have to hurry it up and figure it out, but I doubt it. I think they're going to So as you heard of the nets, we did have a hold, 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 and the clock has stopped. Uh, right now, it looks like the Falcon 9 has uh, hit an abort condition. Uh, we don't have all the information just yet, but uh, hold on, and we will get uh, some more information as soon as the teams have had a chance to review the data and see what's up on the rocket. Yeah, likely, I mean, the thing that we've been watching all morning has been uh, upper-level winds. So almost certainly it's uh, an upper-level winds issue. I would also say, so I just see that they reset the, the clock to T-minus 15 minutes. Uh, I wouldn't get too excited about that. Uh, that's generally part of their standard abort procedure. They automatically reset the clock to T-minus 15 minutes. Um, that T-minus 15 minutes is going to put them, put them past the launch window. So... Uh, I don't see how they're going to launch today. I think it's almost certainly going to be a scrub for today, um, which is unfortunate. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. we'll see if they if they try to push it. Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. Yeah, a bunch of people just talking about the hold and uh, aborted clock recycle is standard routine. Uh, so there's there's not enough time, so it's almost certainly going to be a scrub. Um, this oh actually this uh, so what I just saw here was the first stage liquid oxygen thermal limit constraints were reaching the safety limits. I'm not sure what that means. So uh, maybe that's not an upper level winds abort. I'm not entirely sure. Um, that this was new news that I just read on Twitter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, 
At this point, uh, it's yeah, pretty much going to be the end of the end of today's launch. But we'll listen in. Captain, that we're scrubbed for today's operation as we've uh, run out of window. Please set up for a 24-hour recycle. We're in section 58 for uh, post scrub uh, turnaround. Yep, so that was the, the launch director that officially scrubbed for today. So it is officially scrubbed, no launch for today. They'll do a 24 hour recycle and launch again tomorrow. Um, tomorrow is the backup window. I believe 9.07 a.m. Eastern time is the, the opening of tomorrow's backup window. Um, I'm gonna have to find out. I've, I've got some stuff going on tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to live broadcast it tomorrow, but I'm going to try. I'm going to see if I can, uh, if I can uh, shift some things around and move some stuff around so that I can broadcast tomorrow. But uh, yeah, they've officially scrubbed for today, so uh, it's not going to happen. I'm kind of just curious what they're going to do with the broadcast here because they've kind of just gone silent at this point. But it is a beautiful, a beautiful live look at the Falcon 9 uh, out on Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Uh -huh. So let's see. Yes, Killer Katie says today's scrub day. It, for sure, today is scrub day. So we we started the day with four launches, and for those of you just joining zero. us, we did have an abort. Uh, you heard that hold, hold, hold call on the launch nets. Um, unfortunately, this abort was uh, it was triggered by the onboard uh, Falcon 9 flight computer. Uh, the unfortunate part is that it has pushed us past our launch window today. Uh, so it means we will not be able to recycle the countdown and attempt again. So it looks like uh, we are going to be attempting to launch tomorrow. Uh, we have another window tomorrow at starting at 9.07 a.m. So uh, please tune in tomorrow for uh, the next attempt of the GPS-3 uh, uh, space vehicle satellite. All right, well, that's it for, uh, <laughs> that's it for them today. Uh, they're off the air and they're done here for today. So, uh, so from what I'm reading here, it actually was not upper level winds, uh, even though that was the big, um, the big concern. So from what I'm reading, I've seen this from two sources now on Twitter, um, is that they, uh, they scrubbed it, uh, due to thermal limit constraints on the first stage. Um, so this was an internal, uh, abort call from the Falcon, the onboard Falcon 9 computers, uh, not necessarily an external abort call from uh, people watching the upper level wind conditions. Um, so uh, let's see. So, oh, okay. So and here's another thing. So we started, I started saying we started the day with four launches and I said we're down to zero. Actually, we are down to one because the Delta IV Heavy, uh, I thought it was officially scrubbed. It's not officially scrubbed. Um, but it has an 80% chance of weather violation. Um, so there's a, there's a very good chance it will be scrubbed, but there's still one launch left. We started with four. We had SpaceX, that just scrubbed. We had Blue Origin, they scrubbed. Uh, SpaceX scrubbed for the, uh, the internal thermal, uh, uh, what did I say it was? Thermal limit constraints, safety limits for, uh, um, so SpaceX is scrubbed today. Blue Origin scrubbed for ground infrastructure issues. Um, Arian Space, the Soyuz uh, for Arian Space, uh, that scrubbed for today. That was also supposed to be this morning. Um, I don't know, what did they scrub for? I um, can't remember. I saw it this morning, but I was paying attention mostly to the, uh, the SpaceX stuff. Um, let's see, Arian Space. Da -da -da -da. They delayed due to weather conditions. So that's another another weather issue was the Arian Space one. Uh, and then number four that we have left is the Delta IV Heavy. That only has a 20% chance of uh, good weather conditions, 80% chance of poor weather conditions. So uh, there's a very, very good chance that the... Uh, um, that the Delta IV Heavy will also scrub tonight. And we'll go around from four down to zero, but we, there is one left. Uh, I will not be live streaming that one tonight, um, but that's the, uh, the Delta IV Heavy launch that's a little later uh, this evening. If you wanna check it out and see if maybe they go for it, we'll see. Um, yeah, Mike's gonna go to Red Lobster. Yes, tell, ask him if they'll, if they'll sponsor us too for the, uh, the Space Lobster. <laughs> um, Let's see, they'll be busy pouring over the log files. They have to scrub too for the principle of it all. Um, let's see, cancel. Yep, a bunch of people saying cancel. How can you scrub after lighting the fuse? Well, I don't think, they, they didn't quite light the fuse yet. Uh, they were just, they were fueling the engines, uh, but yeah, they've, they've scrubbed it. Um, 
Let's see. Yeah, a bunch of people disappointed, I see. I see a bunch of bummers. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, it is a bummer that they're they're not launching today, but I'm sure they're they're going to be very careful. I mean, they always are generally very careful at making sure they'd much rather have a scrub and a delay than have some sort of major malfunction during launch. And especially so for these Air Force launches and, and any sort of national security launch, because it, it is... I, I get the sense, and from what I've read, this SpaceX has had to do a lot of work just to get in the running to do these national security launches. So they've been generally kind of hesitant to use SpaceX for this kind of stuff because um, because they're they're a new a new player, even though they you know they've been around for uh, over ten years now, but. Uh, they're a relatively new player in the uh, the rocket launch game here. Uh, their their technology is so new, you know, with the reusable rockets and stuff like that. Uh, that's uh, the, it's hard to see what the the track record is of it, uh, even though they do have a pretty good track record from from what I can see. Um, and uh, you know, they've made they make so many changes to the platform so quickly uh, that that's just a little bit unsettling for some of those really expensive missions um, that are that are really high priority so it's it's very hard for spacex to get to even get in the running for these national security missions here and now that they have that now that they are they absolutely want to make sure that nothing goes wrong because uh, they don't want to do anything to jeopardize that so uh, coach mike says so they scrapped the launch yep they they have scrubbed for today um, and 79 pontiac do they have to empty the tanks yes they they will empty uh, they will empty all the tanks. They'll they'll lose a little bit uh, to uh, boil off from like liquid oxygen and things like that that they can't recover. But generally, they're gonna they're they're gonna empty it and save the rockets. Um, and um, let's see. Uh, oh, Matt Gixer says he he wish he could have been around to watch the Saturn V launch in person. I know. I I I wish the same thing. I watched a lot of those old videos that see the Saturn V launches. I, I wasn't around when the Saturn V was launching, but I really wish I was um, because that just looks so powerful and so awesome, uh, which gets me even more excited for things like uh, the SpaceX, uh, the BFR, or it's not BFR anymore. What, is, what do they call it? The, uh, uh, the Starship and, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank. But anyway, the SpaceX BFR. <laughs> um, you know stuff like and uh, and the uh, Blue Origin New Glenn, which is also enormous. Uh, so all these huge platforms that are that are just going to be massive and hopefully super powerful. Uh, it just gets me even more excited about about those. So um, let's see. What do you what do you like more about the Delta Heavy over Falcon Heavy? If you don't mind asking, I actually personally I like the I don't know. Well, he might not have been asking me, but <laughs> um, I like the Falcon Heavy. Personally, I'm a big SpaceX fan. I mean, the Delta IV Heavy is a great platform. Um, it's it's very reliable. It's sent a lot of high-profile missions. Uh, so, a lot of respect for the Delta IV Heavy. I like the Falcon Heavy just because of. I mean, personally, I love just the modernness of the 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 Falcon Heavy and how they can recover the side boosters and maybe recover the center core. Uh, they didn't last time, but uh, you know, potentially they can recover all three cores and reuse them. I know that, that just really gets me excited for space flight in general. Uh, you know, the, the Delta IV Heavy is an older platform. It can't do stuff like that, um, but it is a very reliable platform. Uh, so there's, you know, still got a lot of respect for the Delta IV Heavy. Um, all right, well, I think, um, oh, so somebody just sent me a message uh, on Twitter here that I saw and asked me if I sent the stickers. No, I have not, from, if you if you won a prize from the last launch, they're actually, they're in my desk here. Um, I have not sent them out yet. Uh, I think I told you last launch, we had a lot of work going on around here locally. So, uh, so uh, and by, by locally, I mean specifically right here in the room I'm sitting in. So, um, so I have not, if you won a sticker or a pin from the last launch, uh, I have not sent those out yet. I will send those out. Uh, hopefully today I'm going to try to get those sent out here now that uh, things are starting to wrap up and we're getting things put back together. Um, so I, if you, I did not forget about you. If you want a sticker or a pin or a patch from the last uh, live broadcast, uh, those will get sent out today. Um, 
and uh, I, we will. Uh, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try really hard to do a. Uh, um, I'm gonna try to broadcast this tomorrow. I gotta take some time today and figure out how I can make that work and what I can shift around. Um, but we'll see if we can launch it tomorrow so we can do some giveaways tomorrow. Generally, I do the giveaways if we have a successful su successful launch. Um, so uh, so we'll see if I can make that work. I'm really I'm gonna try really hard to make that work. Um, but speaking of Falcon Heavy, um, the uh, we've got some Falcon Heavies on the schedule for late January, could push into like February, stuff like that. Um, but somewhere in that range, hopefully we will see a Falcon Heavy coming up here soon. A lot of exciting stuff happening, or at least scheduled to happen in the beginning of uh, 2019. So hopefully, uh, hopefully those all stick to their schedule. We've got the demo mission for the, the uncrewed test for SpaceX. That's really, really exciting. Uh, maybe some more Falcon Heavies. Hopefully, we've got, we're still waiting on Arabsat and the STP-2 mission for the Air Force. Uh, so we're we're still waiting. To, we're waiting for that second Falcon Heavy. It's been almost a year. It's been like uh, what ten months since the last Falcon Heavy. So um, we're we're coming up on a. It's going to be like a year between Falcon Heavy launches, and I really want to see another one of those. That was pretty awesome. And uh, Matt Gixer said that nothing can compare to two booster landings. That was awesome. I loved seeing those two boosters land at the same time. That was amazing. So, um, all right, what else did I miss here? I'm probably going to wrap it up here soon. Texas Pool Man says he can't wait to fly into space. That would be kind of cool. Uh, Arata Man says they said due to computer problems. No, I think, uh, I think today's scrub, I, I wouldn't say computer problem. Um, from what I heard, it was the onboard computer that called us uh, an abort. Uh, but from what I read, the, uh, the onboard computer called an abort because of, uh, in, uh, what was it? Uh, let, me find, let me find the exact text it was. It was because of the first stage liquid oxygen thermal limit constraints reaching their safety limits. That's, that's the most up-to-date information that I have for the reason for today's scrub. So the liquid oxygen, which is super chilled, uh, it's got to stay super chilled. If it warms up too much or it gets too warm, it can expand too much, uh, which is not good. Um, so they, they try to keep it super chilled. They got to keep that temperature down so they can get enough liquid oxygen in the tanks because uh, they, the super, they super chill it so they can get more oxygen in the tanks. The oxygen in liquid form is a lot more compact than oxygen gas form, so they get they get it in liquid form into the tanks, keep it super chilled, and they got to keep it cold enough so that they can get enough in there and that it doesn't heat up, cause too much pressure, pressurization in the liquid oxygen tanks. All sorts of problems happen if it starts to heat up. So, um, so from what I read, the first stage liquid oxygen thermal limit constraints were reaching their safety limits or reached their safety limits. Uh, and that was the reason for the hold. Uh, and then there was just not enough time left for them to resolve that and push forward with the launch because it was a short window today. So, so uh, that was that was the reason for today's scrub. Um, Mike Ferguson, he's waiting for his uh, his moon flights with uh, Maizawa on the BFR mission. He wants to go around the moon. He, he told him he was an artist and said, <laughs> says he sent in some turkey hand drawings. You put the little hand up and draw you know, draw the turkey. You sent, sent that over to Maizal. I'm sure they, I, you're probably at the top of the list. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen your drawings, but from the sounds of it, it sounds good. I, I would put you at the top of the list. It's probably better than I can draw. That's one thing I can't do well is draw. So you're probably ahead of me in the runnings. I would say that at least. Uh, less than nominal fuel quantity, in, less than nominal lobster fuel quantity indicator failure. Um, all right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap up here for today since we don't really have much else to chat about. Um, we did have, uh, I'll bring it up here just while we're, while we're here. Um, but, uh, in case you missed it as well, uh, Virgin Galactic did another one of their flights of Spaceship Two, uh, just, uh, last week. They did another flight as well. 
so a lot of stif- stuff happening in the space flight world here. Spaceship Two, uh, they reached um, a big debate on whether it was near space or actual space, but they went over 50 miles in altitude, which by uh, by NASA and Air Force standards, they would give the the pilots astronaut wings, and they would officially call them astronauts for reaching over 50 miles in altitudes. Altitude. Uh, or I think it was about 82 kilometers in altitude. Uh, But generally, a lot of people, uh, kind of myself included, have always considered uh, 100 kilometers kind of the the arbitrary edge of where space begins. Um, But really, it's still a huge accomplishment for Virgin Galactic to get Spaceship 2 up to 80 kilometers uh, or 82 kilometers, so congrats to them as well. Uh, and Gregorius wants to know, how about your launch schedule? Anything planned yet? We don't have anything planned for us yet. Um, we'll, our next flights won't be, for our weather balloon flights, won't be until uh, probably late March, maybe early April. That's usually when we start up again for our flights. So coming up in the springtime, we'll do more of our launches. Um, still trying to, trying to uh, do some planning and see what we're going to do. Uh, and what some of our goals are going to be for this year, what kind of missions we're going to do. So we've got some some ideas, but uh, we're going to try to try to. We'll definitely get some more weather balloon flights up for us this year. Those are always fun and exciting. Uh, one of the things now that we've got our, our tracking system is working fantastic. Um, that last summer we did a, a great job with the tracking system. Um, so now that that is working really really well for us, uh, we may may upgrade and do some nicer cameras. Uh, we've traditionally used some um, some really inexpensive cameras just because we were afraid of potentially losing them, but, uh, but we may upgrade and use some nicer cameras uh, this spring and summer and see if we can get some, some really good footage of, uh, of the edge of space from our weather balloon flights. So, um, would you be one of the astronauts going to Mars on the BFR? Uh, I wouldn't, I would not be the first one. <laughs> I might, I don't, well, I don't know if I'd go to Mars. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I really am interested in watching people go to Mars. I don't know if I would go to Mars. I would go to the moon. I think that would be kind of cool. Um, I don't know if I want to go to Mars just because I'm, I think I'm impatient. I don't, I don't think I have the patience to wait for the entire trip to go to Mars. I don't like to drive, uh, you know, half hour down the road. I don't think I could wait 10 months to get to Mars. <laughs> Um, or six months or whatever it was, uh, whatever it's going to be, it would be too long for me. Um, that's why I would, I think I would go to the moon. That would be a lot of fun. I would like to go to the moon. That would, I could do that. Even just low earth orbit, I would do that as well. Um, that would be kind of cool. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I would, I don't know. I'd have to think hard about going to Mars. I don't don't know if I'd be on board with it, but I still think we should go. Just not me. (laughs) Somebody should go. Somebody should go to Mars. <laughs> um, first few launches are a one-way trip. I think only a few people have that kind of dedication. Yeah, that's the that's the other thing is the, the first couple launches are yeah they're definitely a one-way trip. Um, so you really got to have some dedication to do that. And I there's no uh, there's no internet on Mars. How am I going to live stream to you if I go to Mars? I, I no. Uh, I mean, I, I suppose you could. They've got some sort of, you know, data network with the, the NASA Deep Space Network, um, but I don't th- I don't think it supports HD live streaming yet. So I mean, you guys would miss me too much, right? You don't want me to go to Mars. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Alan Lloyd uh, says he's going to go. Everyone else can stay here. <laughs> I like that too. I, I like that that theory. You can, you guys all stay. I'm going. <laughs> um, it's only yeah only an eight minute delay on the uh, the data network uh, from streaming from Mars. Yeah, it would. Uh, people complain already about the uh, what are we like a twenty second delay? It's like twenty seconds from when I talk to when you actually uh, hear me. People already freak out about that. <laughs> Um, they live stream the moon land. Well, they did. Yeah, they did live stream the moon landing. Okay. Um, not not in H. I wouldn't call it HD, but uh, but yeah, we did get live footage from the uh, from the moon landing. Um, 
but hopefully we're going to get some epic shots of it's not a landing but the uh, the moon mission that uh the bfr mission that uh um i don't remember his first name but maizawa the uh the artist or the uh, entrepreneur that's bringing artists around the moon in a couple of years uh they're supposed to be live streaming that and having some pretty awesome quality footage along the way so excited to see that too all right folks well i think uh i've already said it a bunch of times let me just see um let me see i got a couple of twitter notifications <laughs> somebody somebody had twitter uh chris from nasa space flight said uh at least we had one launch today um and there was a uh this looks like a suborbital uh sounding rocket launched and landed today so at least there was one rocket launched today a suborbital uh sounding rocket um let's see what else did i miss here um oh so the official tweet from spacex says the uh, spacex team called a hold due to an out an out-of-family reading on first stage sensors. Vehicle and payload remain healthy. Next launch attempt tomorrow, 9.07 Eastern Time, 14.07 UTC. Um, so uh, the only one left for today out of our four, four launches is going to be the Delta IV Heavy, which is later tonight. Uh, not a lot of confidence there. Uh, only a 20% chance of being go uh, for uh, the ground wind conditions uh, are pretty fierce there as well so good chance that may uh that may scrub as well tonight uh, but there is a uh the uh indian space agent what is it isro i forget what the r the what it all stands for but the indian space agency uh over in india they do have a launch if you need a rocket launch fix uh that's like early early morning tomorrow as well so there's that as well um so mate tomorrow there's a potential for five launches happening tomorrow uh, we'll see if uh, if that actually happens. So, um, would you take a trip to the ISS with the Crew Dragon? Then, yeah, I would do that. That would I, I'm all for that. I would go to the the space station. That would be cool. I'm I'm on board. Sign me up for that. Um, I I would definitely do that. Um, let's see. Um, so, uh, Fabsy Fab Boast wants to know which company I work for. I'm so I'm I'm a software engineer, uh, and I, I well I have I have a regular job um, that's completely unrelated to uh, anything in the space flight industry. Um, I'm just a big space fan, um, but we also have uh, Overlook Horizon, which is our non that's the uh, our official nonprofit here that does. Uh, uh, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, education for kids, and space flight is one of those uh, one of the things that we incorporate into it. So our our mission is really to get people excited about space and try to get people to geek out on it as much as I do. So uh, so that's where how this all ties in. Uh, so we're a nonprofit, five hundred one c three nonprofit here in the United States, uh, and just uh, like to get people excited again about space flight. Right? I mean, I'm excited about it. I'm just trying to get you guys excited too. Plus, I like to make a fool of myself on the internet for some reason. I don't. Know. It's just fun. <laughs> um, what other comments did I miss before we wrap up? Yeah. So, I mean, if you are new, um, definitely check out. So, we will have our own weather balloon flights coming up this spring, uh, where we launch some computers and cameras on board, and you get some pretty awesome footage and photos. Uh, and we'll be doing those, uh, we do them in the spring and the summertime, so they will be coming up uh, around March or April time frame. So uh, Mike Ferguson says I'm the, uh, red, the public relations officer for Red Lobster's space flight division. <laughs> I like that. That's nice. I... <laughs> yeah, well, it feels like I'm the public relations officer for Red Lobster's space flight division, especially after last summer's uh, space lobster flight and uh, the... Uh, the overwhelming space lobster theme for the entire year. It was a lot of fun. It was fun though. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up here for today. I appreciate everybody joining me. This, uh, even though we scrubbed, we still had some fun, right? Um, so we're going to, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try really hard to, uh, to stream again tomorrow so we can, uh, so we can get it going. Um, Cause I, I really want to see this. 
Uh, and I would like to live stream it and do some giveaways. So I'm going to try to do it again tomorrow, but I'm going to have to see if I can move some things around today. So check out our Twitter uh, Twitter page, Twitter uh, it's at OLHCN on Twitter. Or what do you get? Your Twitter feed, your Twitter stream, your check out the Twitter machine, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, I'll put something out on Twitter if I'm able to, uh, if I'm able to stream for. I'll, I'll put it out either way, whether I'm able to or not. Um, and I'll let you know if I can stream tomorrow's. But I'm gonna really try to do that. So, so I'm I'm wrapping up here for today. I appreciate everybody hanging out, uh, even though we had a scrub here today. And uh, we're gonna wrap this up. And hopefully, I'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, if I don't see you tomorrow, or even if you miss the flight tomorrow, then happy holidays to you. Hopefully everybody has a good end of the year. Happy holidays, happy new year, and uh, hopefully we'll talk with everybody soon because we'll have we'll have some more to talk about. I am sure of it. So thanks everybody for hanging out. My name's Tori. This is Overlook Horizon, and uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks guys. See ya.